Today, we're going to look at the work that we've been doing around community enterprises and value chains in the Brazilian Amazon. But the project comes from um, a series of, of, of uh, prior activities. Um, so what we want to do first is acknowledge the work that this is built on. So in 2016, Sylvia and I won a Newton Advanced Fellowship Grant, which was a three-year program um, all around all sorts of different things, but mostly around formalization and inclusion of Amazonian informal entrepreneurs in their multinational value chains and their partnerships and their impacts. And it focused, we focused as well on the communities and the various stakeholders they're engaged with. So at the time, Sylvia was in uh, Rio FGV and I was at the University of Essex. And so that was where that original award was held. And so we did a series of activities, which included exchange visits, um, time at summer schools, academics from Brazil coming over, us going over there. Um, there were three periods of field work, including a somewhat hairy um, time on, on one of the on one of the boats as it sailed <laughs> to Karaoe and it lost an engine on the way back. Um, and so we floated around um, in the middle of the Amazon. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Um, having spent five nights living on the ship on the boat. Um, so Silva slept in a hammock. I slept in the storeroom <laughs> on a bed that belonged to the community enterprise partnership uh, leader of the of the um the producer association wasn't uh -huh. it but it was in a metal storage room on the middle of the ship where they kept the life jackets and i slept in there under in my little mosquito tent uh, and we had five nights and it was an amazing experience meeting all the community members that um were having their annual meeting uh, for three days mm -hmm. um so there were three periods of these field work in, in rio negro and um uh, in jura um, and then there was work with NGOs, so us working with various NGO groups in Karaoe about their value chains, which is where this work kind of started moving towards. We had a series of workshops which were very successful, lots of external stakeholders, and we facilitated them to facilitate dialogue amongst these different people. Um, and they were key stakeholders. There was um, the FAS, which is the, uh, do you want to explain what FAS is? FAS is uh, an NGO uh, from the state of Amazonas, is uh, Amaz uh, Fundação Amazonas Sustentável, and uh, they are, uh, they enhance uh, biodiversity supply chains in the forest. They have also some programs on uh, scholarships for, for residents in the reserves, not to leave the reserves and to stay in the reserves. And they are very, very well uh, recognized NGO uh, in this area of entrepreneurship in the state of the Amazonas. So that was the first workshop, which we held in Manaus. And then the second one was with a lot of the commercial organizations that work in the Amazon. So that was in San, San Paulo. And then we had one at the end in Rio where various community members came and we had a big kind of developmental workshop, didn't we, that Sylvia had arranged for us on the outskirts of Rio. Um, and then we had various academic knowledge exchange events. So kind of training workshops, discussions, things like that, conferences, workshops, articles, reports. So that was the foundational work. And so what happened was that the Newton, or actually, and we'll just show you where we were. So we did our field work originally in two locations, and they're the ones that we've gone back to with the project that we run with Tiago and Diogo. And um, so in red, you can see the, Rio, the uh, Rio Negro. And then down at the bottom uh, is the other, the other area, the Girard, and um, Manaus is there, obviously, and you can see where Rio is. So the um, two kind of areas of the reserves that we visited and we've sailed obviously the various rivers of the tributaries of the Amazon basically. So quite fascinating experience. Um, so what happened then was the Newton Fund offered the opportunity to build on the existing work with the Newton Fund Impact Scheme. Um, and let me just, I just wanna double check something. Uh, no, I was just checking it was recording. Um, so, the Newton Fund Impact Scheme um, 
was where we were able to go back and build on what we had originally done. And this is where we were able to uh, reach out to new partners who had joined us in the original part program, which was Tiago. Tiago, sorry. Um, so from UFA, do you want to wave? <laughs> Um, so he unfortunately can't be with us physically at the moment, but he's here uh, online, so he'll be able to listen to the discussion you all have. Um, and so that project, we focused on looking at the value chains in the Amazon and to look at realising impact and promoting partnerships. So this fund was only available to the grants that had already won and been involved in the prior work. So it wasn't new work, it was to build on the existing work and it was to not have new research but to kind of realize impact from the prior research so we focused in on the value change that we had experienced in our field work and so we decided that we would focus on those as the main part of the kind of deliverables of the project so this is obviously a partnership between ufa uh, so tiago is our representative uh, the principal investigator uh, from brazil uh, and represents ufa um, me from the University of Leeds now, I moved just as the old project ended to a new institution and Sylvia obviously is now in Puque in Rio and in the project is supported by her um, as the original part of the original work, um, supported by funding from the UK with the Newton Fund and from FAPIAM in Brazil. So, so our original plan, <laughs> we had a great original plan. Uh, was we were going to have all these exchanges, we were going to have uh, eight Brazilian academics were coming to the UK, we were going to have a group of academics from the UK going to Brazil, we were going to have immersion visits in the Amazon, we were going to make these films of the, the supply chains, the value chains in the Amazon, and we were going to have a series of kind of immersive and incubator events. Um, then COVID happened. So uh, the original dates um, were from May 20 to April 22. It was originally, obviously, that length of time. Um, the funding side in the UK runs it from February to the February. So technically, the UK side finishes at the end of this month. And the Brazilian side took it because of some of the logistics. It started uh, a little bit later, didn't it, Tiago? So, um, so it meant that their project goes on until November. Unfortunately, because of the UK funding landscape, we are, they are not uh, supporting extensions of any projects on the UK side at the moment. So that basically means that the UK side of this project finishes the end of this month and the Brazilian part of it carries on. And because of COVID, or the UK side was predominantly associated with funding for the exchange visits. Lots of travel was in the UK budget. And of course, none of that has really been able to happen. So we've been able to move a few things around, but the, <coughs> predominantly it's meant that we're actually going to have to stop some of the UK activities and not realize quite what we had hoped to do from the UK side. Whereas the Brazilian side of the funded project is able to carry on and, uh, and continue. Having said that, the main focus, having had to think about COVID and had to re reframe things a little bit, our main focus in this initial stages has been the value chains and the work with the communities. And that's what we want to talk about today. And we wanted to show you some of the initial activities. So um, let me just, next one. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you um, the first part of the first of the films. Um, and this is the one that's set in this region. Do you want to explain a bit about this region? Yeah, yeah. This is a region uh, called uh, Territorio, uh, Medjugorje Territory, which in fact is a extractivism reserve. Uh, in Brazil, we have a system of conservation units, which is a public policy. And uh, the extractivism reserve is a reserve under the, the conservation units of sustainable use. You have a type of conservation units of sustainable use and you have a type of conservation units of total preservation. So in this case, you, you, you are looking at two, two different types of, of conservation units. 
The big one, the green one, is a sustainable development reserve, and the orange one is a extractivism reserve. Our work uh, was done in the frontier of all uh, of the of both reserves, and uh, all these names, these not small names that you see, they are all communities. These communities, they have around, let's say, sometimes a hundred families. In others, you will see like two or three families. In others, you will see 30 families, 40 families. And as you can see, they are located in the state of Amazonas, uh, in, inside this red uh, uh, box in the other uh, map, the black and white uh, map. Uh, very far from the capital of, of the Amazonas, which is uh, Manaus, far uh, six, six days uh, uh, sailing because the river is very, very, it looks like a snake. It's, it's like very uh, uh, difficult to, to sail and by, you, you need to get a plane and a flight and the flight is like two hours and a half, three hours from the capital of Manaus. So it's a very isolated area, but it's marked by um, a lot of community-based activities, economic activities. Originally, they were uh, migrants coming from the Brazilian Northeast uh, area region. They were attracted by public policies during the Second World War. They were called the, the, the soldados da borracha. They were called the, the rubber soldiers because they, they work as suppliers of rubber to the set to the allies, mainly the United States. Then Brazil has this important role during the Second World War, but they were left abandoned, totally abandoned, and they were victims of forced labor and establish these communities that you, you see. Uh, they mix it with the Indians or other indigenous populations, and they form what we call in Brazil an, eth an ethnical group called caboclos. Uh, and they are mixtured of, of Indians and Northeasts, and, and they're established in this area since, since the Second World War. Then there were new waves of migrants coming in the 70s as well during the military dictatorship in Brazil, attracted to construct all this infrastructure roads and, and, and uh, uh, things that they needed during this time and also being explored. That this. And in the 90s, the reserves were launched. This was a fight of these people. Uh, they, they, they fought a lot for a piece of land because there were lots of conflicts between groups at that time. And both, and the first reserve is the extractivist reserve, the orange one. And then the RDS, the Sustainable Development Reserve was, was created, I think that five years later. Yeah, this is the first place that, this is the place that you will see uh, the oil seed supply chain. They are suppliers of, of, of cosmetic multinationals in Brazil. And it's an incredible uh, experience that we have uh, different from the stories of, of burns and, and invasions and conflicts in the Amazon. You are gonna watch a nice story. <laughs>